Podcast number five deals with hydrostatic pressure. A fluid always has a pressure as a result of molecular activity. The units of pressure are force per unit area, which is newtons per meter squared. And, but, it, but because a newton per meter squared is such a small amount, we tend to deal with larger values, which are, would be one bar, for example, which would be 10 to the 5 newtons per meter squared. Or alternatively, one pascal, which is one newtons per meter squared. The pressure at a point, interestingly, is independent of direction. So if you're deep sea uh, diving, the pressure acting up or left and right is always the same and it always acts normal to the surface. Here's a typical weather map, and it's something that you probably see from day to day from watching the weather forecast. What you'll see here is a high moving in across Ireland and the UK, and it has a number written below it called, uh, that is 1044. As you can see further over uh, Eastern Europe is a low of uh, about 999. So what are these values? Well, let's start by taking a look at pressure. Generally, we talk about absolute pressure, which is the absolute and total pressure at any particular point. Absolute pressure, however, includes both atmospheric pressure that's acting down on us now, as well, uh, which is a value of about one by 10 to the five um, newtons per meter squared, which is about one bar, which is about 1,013 millibar. So that would be average atmospheric pressure. And that is part of the absolute pressure. So if I'm looking at a system we would, that is under pressure, we generally have zero plus the gauge pressure, or atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. So if we take a look at a gauge that I have here, we can see that even though the atmospheric pressure is about one bar, that the dial here is reading zero. Okay, this is gauge pressure which is zero, which means that absolute atmospheric pressure is not included. The absolute pressure here would be the reading on the dial plus the atmospheric pressure. So if we go back to the slides now, we can see that the absolute pressure can sometimes be lower <coughs> than atmospheric if we have a, a certain vacuum or suction, so a reduction in the absolute, in the atmospheric pressure. So if we go back to the the chart here, the weather forecast chart, we can see that highs of 1044 are in millibar and that would be a little bit greater than typical atmospheric pressure and that 999 is just below uh, typical atmospheric pressure. But let's now look at gauge pressure. We can see in this typical water tank that um, the pressure between the top and the bottom, so the pressure difference, delta P, P bottom minus P top, is equal to the force divided by the area of the container. The force acting down, of course, is the mass of the water times gravity, and divide that by the area of the container. By working down through this, we can find that the delta P, the difference in pressure, is equal to the density of the water times gravity times the height of the vessel. And that, an easier way of writing that would be delta P is equal to rho GH. This is an equation that you need to know. So how does that equate to gauge pressure? The gauge pressure is equal to the pressure at point X minus the atmospheric pressure, which is equal to rho GH. The pressure head corresponding to the uh, pressure at uh, that point, or the gauge pressure. H can be written as the gauge pressure divided by the density and the gravity. At what depth? of water is the absolute pressure double? A simple question, we know what the pressure is here in atmosphere, so at what depth would you have to swim for the pressure acting on you to be double what it is right now? So we can take a look at this. The atmospheric pressure is one by 10 to the five. The absolute pressure at that depth would have to equal the atmospheric pressure plus rho g h, h being the depth, we have to find out what that is. So the absolute pressure that would be acting on you at that depth would be twice atmospheric. And H, therefore, can also be shown to be P absolute minus P atmosphere divided by rho G. Combining the two, we can see that the H is equal to 1 by 10 to the 5 divided by 1,000 divided, and also divided by 9.81, which is equal to 10 metres. And that's the end of podcast number 5, which dealt with hydrostatic pressure.